over night one. Uh, without any further ado, I'm going to turn things over to the Executive Vice President of Global Talent Strategy and Development, Paul Triple H Rebeck, who also will have a very special surprise for the big day. Surprise! Um, hey, everybody, thank you very much for joining the call tonight. Um, I, I thought we had a, a spectacular show. Um, somebody just came up to me uh, a little bit ago. It was actually uh, William Regal came up to me and mentioned that this was our 34th takeover, and he just said it to me. He said, man, name a company that could put out 34 um, straight big pay-per-view events like we have and have them pretty much across the board all deliver. Uh, I thought that was pretty cool to think of it that way from the, from the little brand that started on the WWE Network uh, all the way to where we are today. Um, it's been quite a ride. Last year and a half has been rough for everyone on, on every single level of talent to staff to crew to, to trying to continue to do what we do to put out product and under the tough circumstances, no fans, a couple fans, uh, video fans. It, it's, it's not been an easy process. And um, tonight was one of those nights where I felt like something special happened and the door opened back up. Like maybe tonight for the first night, I felt like we could see the light at the end of the tunnel on, on a lot of things. And, you know, we were able to have, uh, you know, what, what seemed like a significant amount of, of fans that were very excited and very loud and very passionate to be in here to, to see what we do. And our talent were chomping at the bit to be able to go out there and and, uh, and do what they do and show the world uh, how good they are. And I think that tonight, much like the, the name of the pay-per-view without sounding cliche, uh, you know, stand and deliver is exactly what we did. So across the board, I thought this show was spectacular. I thought talent delivered. I thought it flowed well. I thought the, uh, the layout was good. The set design, the, just everything clicked well. Um, and I want to thank also our partners with, with the USA, NBCU Peacock, just simulcasting on Peacock while we were live on NBC. Um, I thought it was great. And, you know, uh, look forward to following up on it tomorrow night on Peacock. So I'm going to open it up and, and get right to the questions. But the, the special surprise is that Shawn Michaels is here with me uh, to, to, <laughs> to participate in this. So feel free. Uh, we'll ask questions. And, uh, you know, if, if you want it to be with Shawn, if you want it to be with me, whatever, and we'll both take a stab at answering them and, and uh, go from there. So uh, I'll open it up to questions now. Thank you guys all for being here. Thank you. I have a one question for us. Thank you. Thank you. If you'd like to ask a question, please press star one on your telephone keypad. Once again, star one for questions. We'll go to Gary Cassidy, Inside the Ropes, UK. Hi, Paul. I'm Sean. Thank you for taking the time. Um, another incredible takeover, and we're only at the halfway point. So um, my question, you know, for either or both of you, I guess, uh, it's just looking at that incredible main event, a very fitting one. How do you reflect on Ayo Shirai's reign and what's next for her? And also, why was Raquel Gonzalez the woman to eventually dethrone her? I mean, she's had one of the best years ever, but why was she, in your mind, the person that was going to end such a monumental reign? Uh, I'll start by just saying I've said it a lot in these calls. I've said it a lot in press. Not because I'm trying to hype the brand, but because I truly believe it. I believe you are right. You could make the argument that she's the best female uh, performer on the face of the planet. She's amazing. Um, I truly believe that. Um, she just, I can't say enough good stuff about her, and she has had a mo monumental reign as far as for me, and then I'll let Sean uh, give you his point. As far as for me, why Raquel Gonzalez? Um, right woman, right time. She's got a presence. When you see her, it's hard not to think um, she's a star. You know, and, and it's, uh, it's interesting that that's all been in within the last year, year and a half. When you look at the transition from her debuting with Dakota Kai to where she is right now, I mean, from stature to look to physique to just everything, she has capitalized on every second of every moment 
transformed herself into an absolute star. And I think she's just nicking the surface. So I, I think, why her? Because she put herself in a position for it to be her. For sure. And that's something I, I just have to say. It was two and a half years ago. Um, and I just happened to stroll into a coconut show in St. Petersburg. And there was this, I mean, two unbelievably beautiful, tall, strong women in all black. It was Raquel Gonzalez and Rhea Ripley standing there together. And I remember just sitting there and looking at them and going, oh my goodness, those two are going to be stars. And, and, and it's happened. Watching Rhea Ripley, homegrown, right? I mean, she is NXT through and through. And I've had the opportunity to watch her grow into an incredible performer. And the work I think uh, of Raquel Gonzalez is unparalleled in it. So that's why, from a personal standpoint, to watch her journey has been one of the most impressive and honestly feel good stories. You know, it's be you love to watch people that work that hard uh, get recognized for that. And Leo Shirai, for me, it's simple, it's simple all the time. She's money. She's guaranteed every time. Leo Shirai, you can bank on her night after night, takeover after takeover, live show after live show. She gives money all the time, and again, she's earned the right to be called the best in the world because she proves it by an empty night. Excellent. Thanks to both guys. Can't wait for tomorrow night. Thanks, me too. We'll take our next question from Miguel Leva, Marcus Payne. Hello, Michelle, and for staying for the call today. I've been on your able show tonight, and congratulations to both of you. And tonight's main event has left us a big surprise with Raquel uh, as the new and experienced champion and having her uh, as the new champ makes me a question to myself. Uh, so what's next for you, Shirai, in NXT? Do you think that she stop with the brand and must go to Raw or SmackDown? Or do you think that there is something more that she needs, she needs to achieve in NXT? I think there's always to achieve. I think, but they, first of all, Io Shirai has the right to do what she wants to do. So to me, if, if Io Shirai wants to take time off, she takes time off. If she wants to come back and go after Raquel Gonzalez, she's earned that right. If she wants to, um, to do something else for a bit or, or any of that, she's earned the right to do all of it. But it, it's, it's an interesting thing here where when, whenever somebody loses an NXT, they, they're so dominant, they're so big, they're so whatever – you know, and they have this incredible run, and then all of a sudden they they they, they uh, there's a bump in the road. They lose a match, and everybody's like, "Well, you know, clearly they're going someplace else." Like, why is that? You know, it's it's just a funny thing. Like, if somebody loses any place else in the world, nobody goes, "Well, they're going someplace else." Um, th there's always more to do. There's always more to proving that you're the best. There, there's there's the next challenge. There's the next competitor. There's the next all of those things. So for me, it's whatever Ia wants to do, but um, I don't see that as she lost one match over the last, I don't know, whatever, 300 something days that she's been champion. And all of a sudden she's just moving on. Well, for me, I say no one, right? The deepest, best women's division in all the world, right here in NXT, why in heaven's name, go anywhere else, but stay here and face the best. Thank you, Miguel. We'll take our next question from Alistair McGeorge with Metro UK. Uh, hi, Paul. Hi, Sean. How are you both doing? Great, Alistair. Good, good. good. Um, I want to touch on Walter and his match tonight and also an interesting tweet from Eric Rowan who seems interested in sort of coming to the brand to face Walter. Is that a match sort of for two of you to be tempted to look into? And also, can you just tell us a bit about how unique Walter is as a talent? Everybody wants to face Walter until he stops <laughs> for the first time, I'll tell you that. Uh, <laughs> you see old Mike Tyson, everybody got a plan until he get punched in the mouth. Um, 
That chop sounds good on TV until so you take the first one, and then you start thinking, like, why did I come here again? Um, I, look, uh, Walter's a machine. Different level. Different uh, focus. Different, you know, if you were to say, what is it that he does that's, that's special? Everything. But but what is what's special about it? it? Just does it so well, right? It's not a particular thing or some kind of crazy move or some type of special effect or anything else. He makes the simplest things mean everything. He gets the most mileage out of everything, and he has created an aura and a, a, an importance to who he is and what he does that very few people can build. To me, he is straight money. And, uh, you know, he's going he's gonna to travel back home for a little bit. But I'll be honest with you, NXT UK, he's excited to be there. He's excited to be doing all the stuff he is. But I can't, get, wait, I can't wait to get him back here. Because there's, uh, there's a lot of matchups I'd like to see. And realistically, when you just put Walter's name next to a lot of people, you just go, oh, I can't wait to see that. There's a lot of names. Yeah, there isn't anybody that doesn't want to be in the ring of Walter. And certainly for me personally, what I love most about Walter is that he loves NXT UK. And he is faithful to NXT UK, and he's uh, that champion. And I think, as we saw tonight, he's going to be that champion for a long, long time. Hello, thank you, and congratulations on the show. I'm looking forward to tomorrow. Thank you so much. We'll take our next question from Mike Johnson, PWInsider.com. Hey, Mike. Hey, gentlemen. How are you tonight? Great. Hey, yourself? Doing good. Uh, obviously a great show. Congratulations on that. I kind of want to follow up on the Walter conversation and NXT UK. Obviously, uh, Sean's very involved in that brand, and it's been just killing it on all cylinders since its relaunch and its return. Walter's such an important part of that brand, but given what he did tonight with Tommaso Ciampa, how much of there is a, is a lore or a want to pull him off NXT UK and have him here in the States on a full-time basis? And, you know, obviously there's a lot of logistical concerns right now, but, you know, in a perfect world, you know, is that a possibility? Do you see that as his future? Because the narrative has always been that he's wanted to stay based in Europe. Could we see a guy based in Europe coming here and working full time for NXT in the States on a consistent basis? It's not something you've done before, but is that something you might be able to work at walk work out with Walter? Yeah, look here here's the interesting thing to me. Uh, people always go like, Well, if you're in the UK, you're wrestling in the UK or you're in the US, you're wrestling here. It's like what, seven hours to get to the UK. It's like an hour longer than it takes to get to LA from New York. If if Walter wants, Walter can stay at NXT UK, stay dominant there, stay champion there, stay doing everything he's doing there, and come over here and chop the bejesus out of a bunch of people and never miss a beat. Um, I, it, it really comes down to uh, the restrictions of the time, right? I think he's in a place in his mind where those challenges are very intriguing to him now. Does that mean he wants to leave home? Probably not. Um, but I think the reality of jumping on a plane, coming over here, chopping, chopping somebody until their chest is purple, and then flying back home and doing it again over there is very intriguing to him. So I think you could see Walter in a lot of places. Um, it, it really is where he wants to go because the door's open for him to go to all of it. It really just comes down to, to the logistics of um, – what can we make happen with travel restrictions? But once that lifts, all bets are off. Yeah, I'm just going to say, if the world would work with us, we would easily figure something out, uh, you know, <laughs> to get Walter uh, as many places as we could, because it's, as, they, as, they, as and all you know, he is a special, special dude. Uh, everybody knows that. Everybody uh, around the business, everybody who wants to be in the ring with him recognizes that. Uh, it would be great if the world would allow us to, uh, to get the, the most out of that. But obviously, we have to wait on that. All right. Thanks for the time, and congratulations on a great first night. Thanks, thank you. We'll take our next question.
question from Jim Barcelona with Miami Herald. Hey, Jim. Hey, guys. Really great show tonight. The camera angles, the production, the set, it was just awesome. It's just a great job that they all do. And since you both are on, I had another question, but I want to ask you this. I think this is super cool you guys are doing this tonight. Paul, what does HBK, what does Sean bring to the NXT table? And Sean, to you, what does Paul bring to the NXT table in just developing this whole thing? Uh, well, from my standpoint of Sean, for somebody that I've sat next to for, you know, for the last 25 plus years of, of us working together and me just looking at him from a, a, a a mental standpoint of the business, the understanding of it, the psychology of it. You know, there's a, there's a lot of guys that can do what we do. There's not a lot of guys that understand what we do. Uh, and Sean has that and then some. And, and, you know, if, if you had said to me a few years ago, who's the guy that I think could be the biggest game changer here if they were to come here and be able to participate with people, it would be Sean because of that level of, of knowledge. And I, I'm, I'm sort of uh, struggling to say it because he's sitting right next to me. And usually I just make fun of him at this point. I'm almost ruining my whole show. He's going to kill him, Yeah, I'm almost <laughs> ruining my whole stick here. But, uh, you know, he, he really does. And, and it's just one of those things. When somebody that has that much experience, that much knowledge, that much passion, and then explains it to you in a way that you go like, Oh, yeah, right. I get that, and I never saw it that way. And I know because, look, as a, as a young guy coming in in 1995, I was sitting under the learning tree of guys like Shawn Michaels. Absolutely. Every night. You know, whether I was in the ring with him or not. And I, and I sat under that learning tree, um, and then, you know, I, I got to sit under so many of them. And then Vince McMahon after that, you know, so... What he brings to the table from an in-ring, from a psychology, from an all that stuff. From a, and then, you know, I've worked with him for 25 years. So he and I think so much alike. And once we start riffing together, um, I don't know. I, I just the, see a lot of people work together. I don't know that there's a better combo. When, when he and I start start yelling, working on things together, and just start riffing off of each other, it just it, it goes to a whole other level. So to me, um, he's the best asset we could possibly get. Yeah, well, and for me, I got to be honest, it is you know, sitting with my best friend and doing creative and enjoying that time together like we used to in the car and, and getting to do it on a whole other level. And again, and I did it tonight and I do it darn near every Wednesday. I do it every takeover where I lean over and I say, hey, uh, you know, thanks for letting me continue to call this my job. You know, getting to do this with you every night to help be a part of these shows and these unbelievable performances. And honestly, now learning from him from a production standpoint has been one of the greatest uh, learning aspects of my life. I'm learning an entire new genre to the wrestling business that I didn't know before. Um, it is, I make fun of him, I call him Scorsese all the time because it's the level at which he goes to production and I'm taking notes and stuff like that and understanding these different camera shots. I mean, as you, you know, all noticed tonight, just some of the unbelievable shots and camera angles and stuff like that, that all comes from Hunter and that's something that I don't have uh, that much experience in. And over the last several years, uh, him teaching me that and trying to glean as much as I can from that. And it just, again, it grows from there. Both of us just continue to build on this, you know, uh, obviously this friendship that we've had, but then being able to extend that to the NXT brand has been uh, an awesome process. And uh, like I said, I every now and then I do have to lean over and go, dude, this is my job. This is freaking awesome. Jim, I want you to understand how painful that was for both of us. <laughs> well, listen, guys, thank you both so much. Scorsese and Spielberg, let's get them again tomorrow night, all right? Let's go. <laughs> well, where's the Waldorf and the other two? Yeah, yeah, that again. Yeah, Waldorf. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. We'll go next to Jason Powell with ProWrestling.net. Hey, hey Sean, Jason. having grown up. Hey, good to talk to you.
to you guys. Um, Sean, having grown up watching you and Marty work as the Midnight Rockers at the AWA, I'm just curious to know how involved you are in working with the tag team wrestlers in NXT. Yeah, well, so look, I mean, I, at one time when I was here from the coaching standpoint, I was working with everybody as, as much as I can. Obviously, with you know the live show and doing more from uh, a production standpoint, creative standpoint, and NXT UK. Um, you know, if that hasn't been as in depth as you know it once was, but again, there's always, you know, there's almost as you see in so many of the tag teams, there's always aspects of the Rockers or DX where there's a little bit of something that I can always connect with in darn near every team we have, and that's again some of the joy that I have. I don't know, it makes you feel good when you can see a little of what it was you used to do and try to add, you know, to that aspect. But I have to be honest, I mean, Marty and I were pretty innovative in 1988, but what these guys are doing these days is just off the charts. And so a lot of times it's now beginning to help them combine some of that unbelievable athletic ability and help them with the storytelling and the psychology and I think that's when it all really starts to come together. And that's always the, the biggest joy for me is when they are able to expand on that and really get the most out of what it is they're doing. And, and Jason, just to add to that from my point of view, we have so many great people here helping with those matches. Talk about producers on these things and, and who are helping these, these young men and women put this stuff together. Whether, you know, I'll put my my uh, I'll put my money down on Sarah Amato well, as a producer, uh, and I've worked with everybody from the time I walked in WWE, uh, best in the world, you know. But but Matt Bloom, uh, Steve Carino, just 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 that line, Terry Taylor, all, all these people, and, and, and but yet everybody, no one has an ego. And everybody just works together, comes together, and goes, Hey, what do you think of this? How about that? You know, it, it's, it's, everybody's just trying to make the best product possible, which is what is awesome. This is such a team. It's great. Well, and man, it's been we, really, really, oh, yeah. we have so many different people with so many different styles that, you know, we can make these performers so much more well-rounded, I think, than we had the ability to be. And that's what I think is so phenomenal about this place, is they, they take in a lot of knowledge from a number of different styles and aspects and rounds them out in a way that I don't think a lot of people can touch. Thanks for the time, guys. We'll go next to Michael Morales Torres with Luca Libre online. Hey, Michael. Hey, I'm on, How are you doing today? I'm great. Yourself? Everything you're here in Puerto Rico. Thanks to both of you for your time. And my question is for both for Sean and, and Hunter. Uh, it is regarding the taxi division. So, uh, Believe me, I, I love the decision, and I know many of the fans uh, did. Uh, but I'm really curious to know, like, why did MSK was the correct decision to hold the NXT Tag Team titles, and what do they bring to the Tag Team division? Um, energy. Yeah, I, I, it's a funny thing. I think if you said, if, and, and this is not a knock on anybody for sure, but if you if you put GYB. Um, and their style, and Legato, and their style, and, and some of the other tag teams that we have, and their styles, and you take MSK out of the equation, the, the, the division feels different. MSK came in here, and it was like this firecracker team that was just bright and speed and fast and exciting, and I don't know, they just have a different energy. Their energy is, is palpable, and, and uh, they bring a different energy. So when you put them into the equation, they change the dynamic. And I think very few of the other teams, I and mean, that's not a knock. It's a, it's a compliment to them, but not a knock to anybody else. But the other teams don't necessarily have that, that uh, they're, they're definitely there. They definitely bring something to the table, the precision, the grit, all those things. You know, Raul and Joaquin with the, with the aerial and everything that they do, they're all phenomenal teams. MSK just brings something different and an intangible, and I think that was the deciding factor for us. It's just they they uh, they were uh, all of a sudden this little light that came in and it just changed the division. I was going to say it's just that we had and we don't 
usually have a lot of missing pieces, but our tag team divisions were so complete, we needed one last little element to round it out, and I feel like MSK did that, and now again, it is a complete tag team division that has a number of different innovative and different styles and unique, uh, you know, uh, I don't know what personality we have that, that we didn't have before. Styles make fights. I've heard that said so many times, whether in combat sports or anything else. Styles make fights. They brought a different style that when you match them up against so many other people, you were just like, oh, I gotta see that. That's just great. You know, it's a, it's a stylistic thing. Perfect. Thank you so much for your time and have a great night. Thank you, you guys. We'll go next to Sean Ross Staff with Fightful. Hey guys, thanks for taking the thanks for taking the time. Uh, before my question, as I mentioned, I was getting on this media call. Kathy Kelly sent me a tweet and asked Triple H how quick he can get his jet out to L.A. and back to Orlando. How quick I can get my uh, my jet to L.A. and back to Orlando? Why is she looking for a ride or something? She said she's asking for a friend. <laughs> well, tell her if she has my cell number. If she needs a lift, she just give me a call. Well, uh, in addition to that, there were uh, some some rumors about what was, what wasn't said at a talent meeting last week. Can you guys maybe clarify, like, like what kind of what kind of information you gave to the talent? And Sean, maybe did did you add anything to that? I know I had heard from a lot of talent that it was about Peacock and the the advanced reach there, and you know a lot of the moves they were in store for. Yeah, look at it. I mean, if I wanted anybody to know what was in the meeting, I would have put out a memo, and you guys could have just got it from one of your sources firsthand and printed it. Uh, it, it was Good. a conversation with our talent. Um, that was exactly that. It was informational. It was informational um, to tell them where we're going. Meetings that we have all the time, uh, given COVID restrictions, we had a lot less than we normally would. Um, as far as the content of the meeting that was reported uh, by a lot of people and, and, and elsewhere, um, completely inaccurate. Never said, never brought up. Nobody else was ever brought up. Wasn't about other people. Wasn't about other brands or companies or anything else. It was a factual meeting to tell people um, where we're going, where we're headed, and to motivate them uh, going into the future. Nothing more, nothing less. Yeah, and I guess uh, the only thing I can add to that is I don't, I didn't hear what the thing was. And I never talk in person. I, I talk as little as possible. To be perfectly honest. But yeah, I'm not big on the public speaking if I can help it. Thank you all. I'm so out of the loop, but I swear to <laughs> Thank you. We'll take our next question from Nick Hosman with Wrestling Inc. Hey, Nick. Hi, Paul. Hi, Sean. Thank you guys so much for taking the time tonight. That's it. Uh, yeah, well, Sean, my question is for you. Uh, there was a stare down you had with Adam Cole. They got a lot of people talking. So, what's going on here? Was it just two guys making eye contact, or do you have the itch for maybe one more big bout, possibly in the next week? Well, look, I was walking back from the ring, and he, and he just started staring at me, so I just started staring back. So, uh, yeah, that Adam okay. Cole would be. Looks at me wrong, I'll slap the face out of his mouth. But, uh, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I, I love Adam Cole. Yeah, he's one of my boys. But uh, no, no, like I said, I, you know, like everybody knows some of the similarities between Adam Cole and myself. Um, and, I, you know, that was just, a, to me, that was just a fun, awesome moment. Uh, you know, prior to that, uh, in the Devlin Santos uh, introduction of the ladder match, it's going to be. Uh, Taking place tomorrow night, night two. But uh, but yeah, no, that was just a moment there between Adam Cole and myself. Got it. Got to say, for me, it was it was kind of fun, and it got me a little giddy too because that's like that's one of those ones that you wish you were ten or fifteen years younger. That would have been cool at one time. Okay, cool. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for the time. Congratulations on a great show tonight. Thanks, Thank you. We'll go next. We'll we'll go to one more before the next. Thank you. We'll go to Bill Pritchard with Wrestle, WrestleZone.com. Hey, Sean hey, and Paul. How you doing? Thanks for taking the time for the call tonight. 
Uh, I, I wanted to circle back uh, something that Paulie said earlier about uh, a loss signifying that a talent is moving on. Uh, Tony Storm's been one of those names that people have been kind of waiting to see what she does next, but uh, people aren't really talking about if she's moving on tonight. They're more or less talking about Zoe Stark picking up the win. So can both of you just speak to what the win does for Zoe and what it does really for rebuilding another the women's division up and kind of getting another name going no matter what happens with Tony or, or any of the other women's talent on the roster. I think, first of all, I'll, I'll, this Tony Storm's uh, uh, one of the most talented women in the world. Incredibly talented performer. But but you, you said it sort of best to me when you were saying, you're talking about Zoe Stark and what an incredible, like, uh, she's one of those women that came in the door you threw something at her, and man, when she got out there, you were just like, "Oh, okay, we're going with this," and 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 gonna give some more opportunity. And then she knocked that one out of the park. You give her another one. She knocked that one out of the park. And you just kept moving forward. Um, but but when you get to something like tonight in this pre-show, a lot of eyeballs on it, a lot of a lot of momentum. Uh, moving Joey Stark forward does not hurt Tony Storm. Moves Tony, moves Zoe Stark up, and, and gives everybody more people to step into the ring with. And you know, the, the art of what we do to me is has always been being able to be in a position where you are on top of a ladder, if you want to say it that way, and you reach down and pull other people up without losing your spot on the ladder. That's the art of what we do, and right, and then you're just pulling more people up so that there's more people for everybody to work with. And building stars around you, that's when you get great. And, and that's what this, this game is about. So sometimes I think people feed too much into the... the, the, the and I don't mean this, it doesn't mean anything. The, the momentum of a win or a loss really where it matters, right? If it doesn't shift momentum, then the loss or the win didn't matter. But if it shifts your momentum, then it was done for the right reason. I don't believe this loss shifted momentum. <clears throat> excuse me, shifted momentum at all, Tony Storm. But I believe it did for Zoe Stark. Yeah, it makes you feel any better. Zoe Stark has taken everybody sort of by surprise. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know that any of us expected uh, or knew what we were going to get out of Zoe Stark, and it's just been tremendous. And so, you know, it's one of those things that is, you know. They keep putting the tips in it. They keep delivering, right? So yeah. That's, and that's certainly what she's done. Yeah, you, you, you just keep adding to the opportunity, um, waiting to see where it's all at, and she keeps over-delivering on everything we do. So uh, really excited to have her here and really excited to move forward with her. And, and you know, look, she's in the mix uh, uh, of everything we're doing right now. And that's a uh, week that we were talking to her a few minutes ago, and she's been here for three months. And uh, she's moved herself right into that mix. But it's impressive. And what she's done is impressive. And I can tell you, I, I, walk, I think I walked in this place first thing this morning. And the first thing when I walked into the to the gym at the performance center was her training. And we were close to showtime. And I looked over, she was still training. Um, and that was before going out there to wrestle Tony Storm. She's a machine. Uh, work ethic is unbelievable. So, you know, the sky's the limit. Thank you both very much for your time tonight. Congratulations on a good show. Thank you very much. All right, folks, that'll wrap up tonight's conference call. I'll turn it back over to Paul and Sean. Well, thank you, everybody. Thanks, Sean, for being a part of it. Uh, but, you know, I, I'm excited to do this tonight and, and uh, excited for the level of event that we have tonight. Usually when I get done these, I think of how great they were and you know, how I wouldn't want to have to be uh, somebody trying to follow an event like that. And, and uh, I look at it, and we're, we're the ones that have to follow an event like that tomorrow night. But when I look at the card of everything that's on it, whether it be Bronson and Gargano for that North American title, whether it's the women's tag match, Eo and Shotzi and, and uh, Candice and Indy, whether it's the, uh, the, uh, the, ladder match, uh, the ladder match for the yeah. Cruiserweight Championship with Escobar, uh, and Devlin, or whether it's Finn and Cross for the NXT title, or then, you know, 
undoubtedly Adam Cole and Kyle O'Reilly unsanctioned. That's the crew to follow it with. So, um, you know, yeah, I said it going into tonight. Almost every match on the card tonight and tomorrow has the opportunity and the ability to steal the week um, and have the match of the entire week of WrestleMania. Uh, and I, I truly believe that. So tomorrow night will be something special. We also have uh, Poppy's going to be here tomorrow night uh, doing something special. So it, it's, it's going to be another fun evening streaming on Peacock uh, exclusively. So if you haven't yet, go get Peacock commercial free. It's phenomenal. Um, and I uh, look forward to seeing you all tomorrow night when we stand and deliver one more time. Thanks, everybody. We'll talk to everyone tomorrow night after the show is over. Have a great night.